This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. Okay, uh, this is the third lecture on pricing. And as I said in the uh, previous lecture, uh, we're going to do op optimum pricing again. Um, the same sort of idea, lower price, more uh, demand. But instead of doing it as a table, as we did there, we're going to um, do it using equations. Uh, it may have occurred to some of you in this particular question that we did in the last one, because everything's nice and smooth, you know, every 50 cents fall, demand goes up by 100. Well, we can use equations. Um, ha uh, but before I do, be careful. If the question gives it you as a table, it can be very clear, then you do it as a table. If you're wanting, if they want you to use equations, which is in fact more likely, then you'll see in a minute how it will be given. There'll be no argument. And first of all, although we're going to end up with equations, the first thing we're going to need to know is the price demand relationship. We need an equation for how the demand changes with the price. You know, every 50 cents falling price means 100 units more in demand, uh, or whatever it is. And we make one big assumption, which may be impractical, but for any questions you get, the big assumption we make is that the relationship is linear. I mean, I've wasted quite a bit of the next page with a rather unnecessary graph, but still, if we did have a graph at the selling price per unit, as against the demand. Well, again, we assume it's linear, but as the selling price falls, the demand increases, which is fair enough, but it's a linear relationship. But um, it, you may, it may be a bit impractical. So, I mean, certainly, you know, come to a um, a price that's so high you, the demand is zero and we're also assuming that if you drop the price so low if you drop the price to zero then there's a maximum demand however uh, in the exam always the price demand relationship will be linear and you should know um, i think from school and from what we did on linear programming uh, that an equation relating the two together will be of the form P equals A minus BQ, where P is the selling price per unit, Q is the demand, and A and B are numbers that you are likely to have to calculate. Uh, you see, you may uh, it may turn out, inventing one, that P is, let's say, 200 minus Point one Q. Well, think about it. It means to get higher demand, there'll be a lower price. Uh, if demand was a um, thousand, point one times a thousand is a hundred. The price would be a hundred. Two hundred minus a hundred. If I wanted the demand to be fifteen hundred. Well, one times 1500 is 150, 200 minus 150, so the price would have to be 50. So as uh, demand goes up and down, the price has to go up and down. But we're looking for an equation of that form. And the first one, bit of your job in the exam stands to be, on information given to you in the question, to decide what are the values of A and B. Is it 200 minus 0.1Q or is it 500 minus 0.5Q? Well, that's what we have to be able to sort out. Um, if it's linear, there are no um, squares, there are no cubes or anything. We assume this linearity. And that formula is in fact, uh, uh, that equation rather, is in fact given you on the formula sheet. And we'll look at the formula sheet shortly. Well, let's see how you can be given a question on this and how we solve it.
Look at example four. A company sells an article at $12 per unit and has a demand of 16,000 units at that price. And we found out that if the selling price was to be increased by a dollar per unit, well, a higher price, it's estimated the demand will fall and it'll fall by two and a half thousand units, exactly what you'd expect. Now remember, we're going to assume it's linear. So if you went up uh, by two dollars a unit, demand would fall by twice that, by five thousand units. If the price went down by a dollar, and because it's linear, demand would increase by two and a half thousand units. However, on that information, we have to write up an equation. We have to work out the values of A and B. Now, if you look at the formula sheet, the examiner does help you here because you're told that B is the change in the price divided by the change in demand. And therefore, we can write that straight down because what are we told here? If the price changes by a dollar, the demand falls by 2,005. The change in demand is 2,500. And so B, uh, leave us uh, one over two and a half if you want, but one divided by 2,500 is 0 0.0004. And in these questions, do be careful about the number of um, zeros. Uh, it's going to make a big difference. In fact, I'd better double check I've got the right number. One divided by 2,500, I was right, 0, 0, 0, 4. And that actually should make sense. Look at the equation, A minus B times Q. Well, for every two and a half thousand change in Q, the price will change by B times it. So 0, 0, 0.004 by two and a half, the price will change by $1. Well, that's given us B, but we also need to know what A is. And here the examiner half helps you. It says A is the price when demand is zero. And that fits in with what I was saying about the graph a few minutes ago. Uh, that the maximum price we can charge is there, and at the maximum price, the demand would be zero. Well, how can we work it out here? We know what the price currently is. The price currently is $12. Uh, but at the moment, we're selling a lot of units, so the price is going to have to, the maximum price when demand is zero is going to be higher. And how much how is it going to be? Well, to have a demand of zero, we need the demand to fall by 16,000 units. And we know that for every 2,500 fall, we have to put the price up by a dollar. And so it will be B.0004 times the current demand. Uh, which is, I keep forgetting, 16,000. So to get to the, the demand to fall by 16,000 down to zero, the selling price has to increase by 0 0.004 times 16,000 is 6.4. And therefore A is 18.4. And the full equation, therefore, P is equal to A minus BQ. It will be 18.4 minus 0.0004Q. And an exam, it could just be arrived at the equation, that's it. Uh, but of course, I could now work out for any level of demand, 
what the selling price would need to be. If, uh, if we want to demand the 5,000 units, 18.4 minus 0 0.004 times, what did I say, 5,000? Again, it's assuming this linear relationship. Now it's important in practice, and shortly, because I've got more to do on this, um, you can have a go, or we'll have a go together, at some more of those. But that's the sort of way you'd be given the information if it's one of these questions. The way it's phrased in example four. The reason I'm not there yet is that, of course, although now we can get that equation, think back to the table one, our ultimate job is to decide what selling price will give us the maximum profit. And here again, I don't know if this will help or not, I'll draw a little graph, although you'll never be asked to produce this graph, I'm only doing it to try and explain what's going on. If I draw a little graph here, dollars and units, think back to the optimal one. What did I do? I worked out for each selling price what would happen to the revenue. And as we were selling, if we were dropping the price and therefore selling more and more units, well, when you sold no units at all, the revenue obviously was zero. But as you sold more and more units, the revenue went up, but it would be a curve. If you look back later at the optimal pricing at the table, what we did, the revenue kept going up but the extra revenue each time got less and less. Uh, what about the costs? Well, always in um, these sorts of questions, we'll assume that the cost is the same per unit, not like we had in the table where it fell a bit, but uh, that we've got the variable cost, more units, more cost. And so, no units, no cost, but as you produce more units, oops, the total cost will increase. There we go. And if we do know the total revenue, the total cost, then of course the profit at any level is the difference between the two. We want maximum profit. Now, we're not going to draw a graph and read a graph, but although what we do is something you learn and becomes automatic, I must try and explain. It's very similar to what we did in the table. Suppose we were selling this many units, at whatever the selling price had to be. There would be our profit. And what did we then do? We then try dropping the price a bit, so selling more units. And we said, well, if we sell more units, the revenue gets higher. The total cost got higher. But if that extra revenue, marginal revenue, was more than the extra cost, the marginal cost, it was worth doing. And we kept doing it. We said, oh, let's drop the price again and sell more units. Again, the revenue goes up, but it goes up a bit less than it did before. The cost goes up, but provided the extra revenue is more than the extra cost, we'll make more profit and it's worth doing. And we kept doing that, but there will come a time when it goes the other way. You know, look here. Suppose we were at that position and we drop the price to sell more. The extra revenue is there, the extra cost is there. Ah, there, the extra revenue is less than the extra cost and therefore it wouldn't be worth dropping the price. Now as I say, you don't need that graph and don't worry, but I do think it's nice to have some, logic, some idea as to why we're doing what we're about to do. 
but we say that the optimal position so the optimal is when we get maximum profit remember if marginal revenue more than marginal cost it's worth dropping the price if marginal revenue less than marginal cost not worth dropping the price but surely the what you might call break even the optimum is when marginal revenue equals marginal cost. That is a position that will give you maximum profit. All right, now let's show you a full example and how we can do it. Look at example five. A company currently has a demand for one of its products of 2,000 units at a selling price of 30 per unit. It's been determined that a reduction in selling price of a dollar will mean extra sales of a hundred. The costs of production are a thousand fixed, together with a variable cost of 20 per unit. It says note, see the note at the top of the next page, and the note in fact is at the bottom of the page, but I'll explain that as we're going through it. Uh, but here we get information about the price demand. We give information about the costs, and it says calculate the selling price at which the profit will be maximised. Watch what I do. I'll do one, you can have a go afterwards at doing one yourself. The first thing we need is to get the price demand equation. Uh, same sort of way as we did in the previous example. Remember the equation is P equals A minus BQ. B, you've got the formula sheet in the exam. B is the change in selling price divided by the change in demand. Here, a change in selling price of a dollar means a change in demand of a hundred. And so this time, B is... 0 0.01. Um, A, well, we haven't had time to practice yet, and we must, uh, but it's exactly like before. A, the current selling price is 30. The current selling price. Uh, but we want the price at which demand would be zero. So how much higher do we need the price to be? It's B times the current demand. So B we've just calculated 0 0.01 times what was the current demand? 2,000. Uh, which gives us uh, 0 0.01 times 2,000 is 20. A therefore is 50. And so now we've got the price demand equation. P equals 50 minus 0 0.01 Q. Great. So, hopefully we're there now. However, uh, to get the optimum, the maximum profit, we need, but this time in terms of equations, to know what the marginal revenue, the marginal costs are. Again, I drew the graph. Each bit, we're saying each time, what's the extra of the extra revenue? What's the extra of the marginal cost? And when the two are equal, we've reached the optimum. Well, how can we work that out? How can we work out how much extra revenue we get for a little change in the demand? Well, effectively, what we do is differentiate. Most of you will probably have seen differentiation somewhere in your life, <clears throat> whether you loved it, hated it, remember it, don't remember it, uh, where differentiating is working out 
what the effect will be here on the revenue of a little change in demand. However, and this is what the note at the end says, in the exam, you cannot be expected to differentiate. You could be expected to write down an equation for the revenue, the total revenue is the price times the demand, always. And so we could write that down quite happily. We know what the price is, 50 minus 20. So it's Q times that. And if you multiply both bits by Q, it's uh, 50 Q minus 0 0.01 Q squared. So there's the total revenue. But we need the marginal revenue, and as I was saying, uh, we get it by differentiating. Now, those of you who remember and can do differentiation, it's actually terribly easy, but you cannot possibly be expected to differentiate in the exam. Nowhere in ACC exams is differentiation the syllabus. And therefore, you are given the formula. If you look again at that, yeah, formula sheet, you will see an extra formula there which says MR, which is the marginal revenue, which is what we're after, uh, equals A minus 2BQ. Now I'm not going to talk through differentiation, how we would arrive at that. If you've done differentiation, You'll know. If you haven't, it's irrelevant. You're wasting time. Uh, but that's the equation of the marginal revenue. And A and B are the same A and B that we're in the price demand equation. So the marginal revenue, what was A for this question? It was 50 minus 2 times B for this question was 0 0.01 Q or 50 minus 0 0.02 Q. So I know it's taking me a while to go through this, but make sure you can get the price demand equation, you can get A and B. Once you've got A and B, <coughs> oh dear. once you've got A and B, use the same A and B in the marginal revenue equation. Uh, finally, though, to uh, use the rule, I said, marginal revenue equals marginal cost, we need to know what the marginal cost is. <laughs> marginal cost. Uh, well, in this sort of question, it's always easy uh, because uh, I did actually say when I was drawing the graph, uh, marginal means variable. The marginal cost of each unit is the variable cost per unit, and you'll be given it. In this question, it says the variable cost is 20 a unit. Well, that is the marginal cost. I know we've got fixed costs, but they're going to stay the same, however many we end up producing. They're irrelevant, uh, but getting the optimum. It's the marginal of the variable cost. And now we are almost there. Uh, a tiny bit of algebra, but we want marginal revenue to be equal marginal cost. The marginal revenue is 50 minus 0 0.02Q. The marginal cost is 20. And so a bit of a rearranging. If I subtract 20 from both sides, 50 minus 20 is 30. If I add 0 0.02q to both sides, 0 0.02q is uh, 30, and therefore q divide by 0 0.02, and I always get that number of zeros wrong, so it's 1,500. And so the maximum profit will occur when the demand is 1,500. Right, with one last step. Although we need the demand to be 1500, remember, we 
can determine what the demand is because we fix the selling price. Depending on the selling price we fix, the demand could be anything. And so the final answer, what is the selling price at which we get maximum profit? We need to go back to the price demand equation, which was 50 minus 0 0.01q, right back to the beginning. And now we can calculate if we want demand, if we want Q to be 1500, what does the price have to be? 50 minus 0 0.01 times 1500. 50 minus 15 gives 35 per unit. And there we are. Now, I'm sorry, that did take me a while. And in fact, I wanted to do one extra thing that isn't asked for. It did take me a while. Uh, when you actually come to do it, uh, it depends how good you are at rearranging equations sort of thing, but it should be pretty quick. But, you know, it's something obviously you've got to learn. And at the same time, the more you understand why we're doing it, the better, the safer. I will do, because it'll only take a few seconds. Uh, one extra thing for that question that isn't asked for, but let's actually work out what the maximum profit will be. Now, several ways you get the same figure, but I think the quickest way is this. We've decided we'll charge 35 a unit and we'll sell 1,500. So I can write down straight away what the contribution is going to be. I hope you did watch the earlier lectures, so you're happy what we mean by contribution. But the total contribution, we're going to sell 1,500 units. And the contribution per unit, the selling price, which is 35, less the variable costs, which were 20. Each unit gives the contribution of 15. So 1,500 units at 15, 22,500. So there's the total contribution, but of course for the profit, there are fixed costs here. What's it say? Fixed costs of production are a thousand. And so the maximum profit, 21,500. Now, of course, only do that if it was asked for, but I didn't want to waste it. But there we are. Now, again, the same figure different ways. As, you know, the profit, sent it out differently by all means. Uh, and of course, and have a go if you don't believe me, but try any other selling price remembering that the demand will be different. But for any other selling price demand, the profit will end up being lower because it's 35 a unit gives the demand of 1500 units, which gives us maximum profit. All right, there we are. There is an example six, which I'm not going to do on the screen because it's almost the same, just different numbers. But, you know, it's important to practice, so please have a go at example six, check the answer at the uh, back. Uh, and if you're wrong and it's not obvious why, well, first I would re-watch this lecture, uh, otherwise do ask the answer tutor. All right, I'll pause this lecture with one final one on pricing, uh, which is quite good for no more calculations. Um, but a, a short discussion about what we call pricing strategies.